Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here, and welcome back to Star Wars Galaxies, the classic sandbox MMORPG that came out in the early 2000s and then died and then was resurrected by, well, passionate fans. Oh man, I am really just in the middle of nowhere. We're playing on the server Star Wars Galaxies Restoration. As the title of this video says, we're going to talk about the various versions of Galaxies and why it's kind of the golden age of Galaxies for player-run servers. They resurrected it, it's back, and you can play it in a bunch of different, a oh, bunch of different forms. Let me turn the game sound down a little bit. I do have um, different music playing in the background so we don't get smacked by uh, the mouse, the rage-filled mouse. Let's head on out of here. I need to head to the nearest starport. I was playing with Tabby last night. There's Anchorhead, we'll head to Anchorhead this direction. The old rebel outpost, which interestingly is being controlled by the Empire right now. Um, they hold influence or sway over here. Restoration just got a update for their Galactic Civil War with some really unique and cool mechanics. So if you've never played Galaxies, just a quick briefing for all of you, and I've got other videos if you want to know more about the game, and I'll probably do more in the future. Well, for sure, Will. Uh, Star Wars Galaxies was a sandbox MMO. came out in the early 2000s that lets you build cities, build your own kind of class with a unique, I'll open it right here, class system with all of these different perfections, professions that could be mixed and matched. Everything from bioengineer to artisan who would make all of the stuff that all the players would use to armor and weaponsmith, uh, architects and bounty hunters, commandos and smugglers, creature handlers if you want to play Pokemon in Star Wars. There's Anchorhead right there. Let's drive on over there. I am playing with a reshade mod. You can see me turning it on and off right now. A little bit of a lighting mod, which does some fun stuff. Makes the game look just a little bit better, a little bit crisper. You know, still looks like it's from the early 2000s, but maybe closer to 2008 or 10 than 2000 and, uh, what was it, 1? Is that when it came out? Galaxies came out just a few months before World of Warcraft, oddly enough. Welcome to Anchorhead. Uh, this was the first place I was ever at where I saw my first PvP battle. Uh, with an Imperial showing up like the third day the game came out with like an ATST. Maybe it was the first week. An ATST outside of that's the cantina right over there. I can see my indicator marking it. Uh, I'm on my swoop bike at the moment, my speeder bike. Let's head on over. Maybe we'll do some space stuff. So, why do I say this is the golden age of Star Wars Galaxies? Well, I think it's a golden age for Star Wars Galaxies because you can play basically any era that you want to, depending on what server you choose. Uh, we'll head on over to Isley, and we'll go to the Starport. Now, I am recording this to give you an idea of population for this server. I am recording this on a Thursday morning, the morning of... There's a guy named Rainbow Six right there. With his ATRT. Bye! Uh, population's actually pretty good on the server. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. It's not like Legends crazy, where you have every city looks like an abandoned town with thousands of buildings all around them. Um, but yeah, there are players running around. Uh, let's go ahead and head to the Moss Isley Starport. Maybe we'll pop into the cantina just to see how many players are hanging out there. But you can play galaxies in any of the eras that it existed in, and a few unique ones. So, the big three for servers, if you're interested in playing, would probably be, well, for the top one, for the number of players currently playing, and I'd have to say that'd be Legends, right? Star Wars Galaxies Legends, it is a post-NGE, meaning they got rid of my favorite thing about galaxies, which is this cool... Uh, these are my current skills, by the way. I am a sniper on this server, which is a rework of the old Rifleman class. Uh, there's a lot of interesting reworks with classes in combat and how buffs work and things like that. Uh, but that would probably be the most populated server, which would be Star Wars Galaxies Legends. I think anybody can can admit to that. Hey, we got a lot of players running through here. Um, and that one is, yeah, that is post-NGE. Then you've got, if you want to go pre-NGE, if you want to go classic Star Wars Galaxies, how it was when it released before the combat upgrade, uh, and then the NGE, then you're probably talking about Star Wars Galaxies Emulator, the first emulator server, uh, with its custom server hardware in the background. Star Wars SWGEMU. I'll put links in the description for all of these. And that does give you the classic skill system. Obviously, you're not going to have Sniper, because that's for this server, but you'll have Rifleman. Um, and that plays very much like the game was when it released. Uh, way back when. And then, for this server, you can get a cool little mix where you're in between NGE and the CU. This is much more inspired by or built around the combat upgrade, which was a brief time period. That is a doctor right there giving out buffs. Um, eh. uh, there's, there's a brief time period in the Star Wars Galaxy's kind of uh, a history where they redid the combat system. Um, they got rid of the having three health bars, sort of. 
sort of. Like, you were shooting legs. It, it was such a short-lived time period that I kind of barely remember it. I remember being like, this could be cool. It's a little wonky right now. I look forward to seeing where it goes. And then they trashed it, and they brought out the, the NGE so they could be like, wow, that's what they did. They That's what ruined galaxies for a lot of people. Uh, but yeah, this is the server that I've chosen to play on, and I'm really addicted right now. Um, restoration. There's also another server out there that has me, like, it's so weirdly unique. There's a server called, uh, what was it called? Star Wars Galaxy's Dark Rebellion. And it runs off, it's a full roleplay server, and it runs off of the old, like, 1990s D20 system. Where you perk into skill blocks, and then you roll D20s to do all your actions, and it's focused solely on roleplay. Which is fairly unique. There's a there's a video on YouTube about it, but there's very few bits of content on that one. Uh, yeah. There's a couple of other servers, too. You've got, like, Empire at Flames, which is a heavily modified version of Star Wars Galaxies that takes place in the Awakening... Excuse me, post-Return of the Jedi. Um, after the movie, you know, the, the Republic has been formed, and you've got the remnant of the Empire, and there's a lot of custom planets and stuff. Um, but there's very little in the way of content out there for that one. And I have not played on that one for a few years. But it did have some cool role-playing stuff, like you could holster your weapon, or you could use a communication device to talk to players, and a little hologram would appear of them, and you could actually see what they looked like in that moment. You could even come like your recruiter and talk to, to talk to them. So some cool stuff there that I wish other servers would pick up on that kind of enhance the role-playing of it. Um, but that one definitely had like a ton of stuff. Welcome to the cantina. Hey, Nibbles is in is in here. Hey, Nibbles. Let's go slash. Wouldn't nod. Too cool. Too cool to wave. I'm just gonna nod. And we can start watching if we want to to get a buff. One of the reasons why I've picked up... <laughs> my character looks so goofy. Tabby found this hat in a treasure map. And we went out and dug it up and it's giving me a little bit of, uh, a little bit of toughness. Nothing too crazy. Uh, one of the reasons, though, that I've chosen to play on this server uh, was basically because, and I can turn on the music here if we want to have a little bit of tunage, uh, is basically because of one of the issues that... Oh, you know what? No, I can't. No, that'll get clipped instantly. It's the Cantina music from, obviously, from this place, from Isley, from the Cantina. Uh, so we're getting our, our, our XP buff right now, and I can request other stats if I want to from Nibbles, but I'm not going to. But one of the reasons is the buff system, why I play on this server. Uh, it seems like they have calmed the, the buffs down in normal Star Wars galaxies, like in, well, even in, like, Legends and in pre-CU uh, over on Emulator. Buffs are such a huge deal that you either cannot even look at high-level content, even in the open world. So if I wanted to run an event, and we even tried doing this, if I wanted to run an event, players with buffs would steamroll everything, and the new players who showed up, who were like mid-level and still on their on their grind up, they just couldn't participate. And it took so long to get all the buffs for players that we would have people losing theirs It'd be f because the timer would be over uh, by the time that the, the last people were getting theirs. And it made having large-scale events just impossible for us. I'm trying to wish I'd taken up on offer to oh, some creature hunter last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creature handler right next to us here. Lanell. This is a pretty strong role-playing community here. The other issue, or at least one of the reasons why I've been enjoying this server, is an issue that I think a lot of Star Wars Galaxy servers run into. Uh, we're at 2 hours and 45 minutes. I know I'm going to be doing a lot of space stuff, so I want to get the full 5-hour buffs. We're just going to hang out and watch the, the dance of a Bothan in a fedora <laughs> while we chat. Um, one of the reasons that, that a lot of servers turn me on for Star Wars Galaxies is the way that they deal with um, AFKers, right? People who are AFK. And I realize that there are some things that you want to do while you're AFK. Sometimes, especially for like doctors, if you want to set up a doctor somewhere to give out buffs or entertainers and stuff, and that doesn't really bother me. Though I am impressed with how often um, the entertainers here just seem to be around. They're just at their computer doing something else. Probably while they're working, I imagine. You know that that tab of the background. But when you what you run into, let's use Legends as the example. And I'm not picking on you, Legends. I think your server's amazing. Really cool content there. Um, but one of the issues that they ran into which you could blatantly see when, back when I played years ago, was that you'd have high-level characters sitting in a high-spawn area for low-level creatures or, or NPCs, and they would just mi macro AFK, kill them all, loot them all, and then they would even sell all the stuff. 
And the recently, about a, about a few weeks ago, there was a post where they were digging into the information. And what they found out was that for Star Wars Galaxy's Legends, players had generated, get this, in a 30-day period, 21.5 billion credits. Right? Now, okay, you got a large player base, maybe that's not so bad, except 78% of all those credits, 16.1, no, excuse me, 16.8 billion came from the junk dealer. Let me tell Nibbles here that I need a XP buff. And that should have gotten rid of my battle fatigue as well. Uh, I've been in a lot of combat. You can see I've actually got some wounds here. I need to go see a doctor, but that shouldn't affect us. Uh, there we go. Nibbles is hooking me up with a XP buff. That's all I actually need. Uh, I don't think... I don't think... Uh... Oh, and giving me the ranged precision. I did walk in with a weapon, but also this is where I normally go to get my buffs from from Nibbles. So I think Nibbles remind, remembers I'm a, I'm a rifleman. Thanks, Nibbles. And then when I'm rich, I will totally, totally drop some, um, some credits on you. I know I'm a cheapskate right now, but I'm poor. All right, let me let me get some work done in space, in space. So you know you can imagine how that ruins an economy if you've got uh, a, a ridiculous amount of resources. And I think they even mentioned that like one player in that 20 or 17 billion, one player ended up generating like six or 700 million credits in that 30 day period. So to put that into perspective, that one player generated, if you divided it by all the planets and galaxies, like the GDP of Tatooine by AFK in a field. And that's, that sucks, that sucks. Um, and it was very easy to see. We saw it a lot when we were doing the legacy quests, the main questing, so you can you know get some levels and see the world a bit. Uh, we saw that a lot and it's a real buzzkill. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into a Y-Wing here. This is my baby. Uh, this is my, this is the right one, right? So I have a two-seater and a one-seater. I have the long probe variant and I have the, the traditional one and I hope I'm getting into the right one. I wish I could name these. Maybe I can, I just don't know how. Uh, I think this is the right one I'm gonna launch. Let's see, let's see. We'll just do some duty missions in space. Uh, I'm working on my collections and we can also work on a little bit of the the faction, the faction fighting. Generate some faction points for my, for my side while we chat. So that's a big deal. But what this server lacks, so I'm not just picking on, uh, I'm not just picking on Legends here or Star Wars Galaxy Simulator, which it, for me, Emulator feels just a little bit basic, right? And when we played it, Creature Handler wasn't a thing that was in, that was years ago. I'm sure that's in by now. I think they've even got like, they're down to their last test server or maybe they're fully out. Yeah, by the way, this game, if you've never seen it, has full space combat. We were running a five-man squadron doing these low-level missions, some duty missions, and it was super fun just having everybody in their Y-Wings and their Z-95s all working on leveling up. I'm very casually playing and, and getting levels, though we are talking about making a guild for Armco, so if you want to do that, jump on over to the Discord so you can keep up with things. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that this server lacks, I think, with its custom combat, its custom galactic civil war system, uh, the one of the things that it lacks is a big, a big feature to sell it, right? Like that's an issue. Legends, I can say they've got the entire city, Cloud City of Bespin. Cool. Star Wars Galaxy Simulator was always like, hey, we're we're trying to be um, very, very, I guess, vanilla and our own thing. We're generating an entire server thing behind it, and we're pre-NGE, and a lot of people have nostalgia for NGE, pre-NGE, excuse me. But Legends has like that big content. You can point to an entire cloud city that they've made. And it's got like a dungeon in it. And I think it's even got rentable apartments inside, I think. Even, yeah, so that's kind of cool. I wish this server had some big flagship thing. And it kind of does with the Galactic Civil War that they've just released. Uh, they have a unique system where, hold on. Nope, that's my space profession. Uh, it's it's different. I don't have the buttons because the macros are different. The the, uh, the the keybinds are different when you're in space. Yeah. So this is the Galactic Civil War system. You probably recognize the UI, but what's different about this is, is once you get to a certain rank in like, uh, say I'm a Rebel Alliance and I hit the rank of Major, then I have to choose an area of responsibility, and it'll be one of these circles, and that's going to be up to me to make sure like I'm responsible for this area. Uh, and your your future ranks rely on that. Right now, the Empire is winning ever so slightly. Definitely not on this planet, though. Holy crap. 
Uh, I find that very interesting. And they even got a tie-in with the Galactic Civil War. All right, let's take a mission. Coming over to the to the station here. Now, you got any special work for me? What do you have for me? Give me... Uh, you know what? Give me Hidden Dangers Rank 1 because I need those for a collection. I need to kill a few more of their of their large transports to have, have the collection done because I'm... For some reason, I'm just really into doing the collection stuff. So... You know, that's a cool feature, but it takes too much explanation on how all that works and ties together. It's great for people who are currently playing, but, you know, it doesn't have, like, Empire and Flames has got a ton of those weird little features that I can easily say, yeah, they've got a, they've got a thing where you could holster your weapons and they show up on your back. That's not a thing in Star Wars Galaxies, but it is on Empire and Flames, and it's very easy to describe that. Or you could pull out a communicator and actually see the person you're talking to and what they're currently like wearing is armor. And it's very Star Wars and it's very cool for role players. Um, and yeah, they're just, I guess the server just kind of lacks that. But where it makes up for it for me is their policies on AFK. Uh, and so far, I really like the way that they're dealing with um, player suggestions. Their player voice system is very, very cool. Where you can suggest something, it can be voted on by the community and if it's possible, uh, it can be implemented, and there's a bunch of examples of how that is going down. Uh, I'm just going to dogfight these guys. Yeah, Galaxies is such a weird one, because you've got the ground game, which plays very, like, tab targeting, very standard MMOE in its combat. But then you go into space, and it's this real-time, almost X-Wing versus TIE Fighter dogfighting system that, while some of you are going to be like, but it's so slow, Shaq, it's only because I'm very early level. As you get farther into it, the, the fighters, the dogfighting, get more and more in into that, like, uh, well, X-Wing series or TIE Fighter series. You know, it's all fast and maneuvering, and the stats get better for starships. Right now, we're fighting pirates for a collection. All tier one, all the lowest level stuff. Just make it a little credits, get a little star, uh, get a little experience. But it's such a wonderful time to play Star Wars Galaxies. There's so much that you can you can just dive into now. Um, am I shooting two different weapons? I don't think I am. I'm definitely in the wrong Y-Wing. Womp womp. I do recommend uh, bind your look around key, which is normally zero on your numpad, to something else. Because looking around in your cockpit is cool. And it's fun. And change your field of view if you're going to play some space stuff. I'll probably do a video talking about the space stuff. If you're playing on a Star Wars Galaxy server and you have one that you just absolutely love, right? Let me know. Let me know in the comments what you're playing and why is it that's the server that's playing for you. If you're interested in joining a server, like these are the three that I've talked about. There are others, like the D21, which is just such a cool idea. I kind of love it. I kind of love it. I've been I've been working on. Uh, I've actually got a player voice post right now. Um, because what I'm hoping is that more servers, this goes across the board, more servers put content creation in the hands of the players. Galaxy's tried this with the Chronicle system and the Storyteller system, but they never really pushed it far enough to really make it fun, where you could make your own quests. I could GM a game, basically, where I'm making quests for other players, content for other players. And so I've, I've been starting to put, like, player voice posts, my very first one working with another player, um, to start pushing that forward, hopefully on this server. We'll see what happens. But where where I'd love to have it so player voice, um, we bring in the Galactic Civil War into the Chronicle system so we can generate our own quests for it. I think that would be very, very cool. So you can know, a player can assign missions, being like, hey, go out into this region and go fight Imperials. Take out 10, you know, Stormtroopers. We need to weaken their hold in this region. And because of their new Galactic Civil War system, where you're fighting over who controls areas, um, you can actually do that and start pushing control one direction to the other. It'd be very cool. It'd be very cool. Ah! I'm being shot. Coming to boot. Coming to boot. Stupid pirates hurting my shields. How dare you? I haven't gotten through yet. They get harder as you get through the waves as we are patrolling Tatooine space right now. Me and Tabby were doing this where she was sitting in the back seat. Um, like I said, one of these is a two-seater and helping like gun for me. And we quickly realized, uh, and I had I had my theory, that the capacitor wouldn't be strong enough to actually power both weapons at one time. And it wasn't. We were draining it way too fast. I think that's one thing that most servers... I know Legends has done this. Um, they've made it so turrets in two-seaters actually do like 2.5 damage. So that, that doing two seats, like having two seats is worth it. 
because this version of the Y-Wing has two seats. I can't use the top gun, but the other version just lets me fire two guns forward, which is far more valuable, right? Like, that's always just the better choice. Unless your server buffs the gunner seat uh, in PvE content. In which case, okay, now you're talking. Now I want a gunner in there. I want to bring somebody else up with me from a mechanical perspective, which, you know, there's, there's little changes in all these servers that I think are very, very cool. And I think they can learn a lot from each other. Come on. I suck. I'm missing every shot. I need to put my Hotas back on here. You can't play this with the joystick. Absolutely. Absolutely. Another cool feature for, for this server, and I know like Empire of Flames, I think, has something um, along the same lines but different, is the Jedi system. You will find no Jedi on this server as of yet because they've got a custom unlock that's a big mystery right now. And players have been slowly working their way through the various phases of it, which I love. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of permadeath Jedi. It's the Galactic Civil War. Jedi are supposed to be rare. And honestly, um, if you're going to be this supposed to be overpowered class, then the the impressive thing about a Jedi in this time period isn't the fact that you're a Jedi. That doesn't impress me. The fact that you're still alive is what's impressive. One of the reasons why I've always been a fan of like the permadeath idea that if you're playing Jedi, you're playing a roguelike. And seeing a Jedi is a impressive and rare sight of like, man, they're playing a different game. They got bounty hunters going after them. They're hiding who they are. You know, finding out who a Jedi is is a big sign of trust. Or they've decided that now is the time that they reveal themselves, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it, it's definitely in every server an era, an, an area of contention. Some people want their wiffle bats. They want to run around as Jedi. They want to just give it to them. They're like, ah, oh, but content is locked. It's like, well, yeah, the content. You are the content, my friend. <laughs> You're playing a Jedi. It's a big deal if you manage to unlock it. Uh, and so far, nobody, I think people have unlocked four sensitive slots, but the, the Jedi system is like being rolled out slowly. And how you get your four sensitive slots, it's built on this like whole deal with you know, things that you've done in the world space. It's a little bit of luck. Uh, and that anybody could be, could possibly, potentially become a Jedi. I've never pushed for ever trying to unlock it in any server, including live. I always thought it was not really right for the time period. Um, oh yeah, and then we started seeing them everywhere when NGE came out, oh boy. So, but every server's got their own take on it. You know, you play in um, Legends and they just give it to you as a class, because it plays much like WoW. And they've got, you know, the Officer class, which is gonna be your, your, your buffing class. You've got your, your, oh, I don't even remember what the classes are. I don't, Commando, I think is one where it's all linear and every, every commando is the same. You know, it, it's just how the NGE is. Nothing against, um, stay on target. It's nothing against legends. It's just how the NGE actually is. Where you're, you're, you're designated down a linear path when you make your character. Oop, stay on target, stay on target. But if you're really into playing a Jedi and you don't mind that, you can just start as one in that server. And you'll see him everywhere. Boom, boom, boom. It was such a slap in the face to everybody who'd actually worked really, really hard to get their Jedi slots back in the day. All right, everyone. I mean, that was kind of what I wanted to talk about. We'll do a deeper dive into this server because this is the one I'm playing on at a later date. If you want to know more or if you want to hear about some of the unique systems that are in Star Wars Galaxies, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. I love talking about this game, about the variations of this game. And I think there's some cool stuff. I think the Galactic Civil War, as it's been rolled out this past week on this server uh, in, its, in its cool, unique way, we might talk about that in a video. As I get farther into it and get ranked up, we might uh, we might talk about the areas of responsibility and the various features that those characters get as they make the rank of general or major, and uh, and talk about just how this server has developed differently than others. I think there could be some cool some cool discussions to be had. All right, everyone. I will see you all in the next video later. Everybody, you have a wonderful rest of your day.